Hello everyone, thanks for joining us in ICC 2022. My name is Asil Koç and I am a PhD candidate at McGill University under the supervision of Professor Lonema. Today, I'll present our paper named as Deep Learning Based Multi-User Power Allocation and Hybrid Precoding in Massive MIMO Systems. Here is the brief outline of the presentation. After the introduction, the system model is presented, then we express the proposed hybrid precoding architecture. After that, uh, the, the, the proposed deep learning based power allocation algorithm is presented. And after the illustrative results, the presentation ends with the conclusions. Uh, the multiple input, multiple output, uh, namely the MIMO uh, systems, uh, has been an already integral part of the existing wireless standards because they can uh, enhance the, the capacity and the performance by using multiple antennas. And uh, there is a paradigm shift in MIMO technology called as Massey MIMO. Uh, by using excessively large antenna arrays at the base station, uh, it can enhance the, uh, the spectral efficiency, capacity, the energy efficiency, reduce the interference, and enhance the coverage. That's why it, it is considered as the key enabling technology for the next generation uh, network. Precording is an important uh, signal processing technique for the downlink transmission. In the conventional MIMO systems, uh, the single stage fully digital precoding is widely considered, uh, which requires a single power hungry RF chain uh, per each antenna. However, it is not applicable for messy MIMO systems with large antenna arrays. That's why the, the two stage hybrid precoding is considered as a promising uh, alternative, uh, which splits the, the precoder as into two parts as the RF precoder and the baseband precoder and connect them with limited number of uh, RF chains significantly smaller than number of antennas. That's why it reduced the hardware cost and complexity and the power consumption in the massive MIMO systems. In multi-user massive MIMO systems, the power allocation is an interesting problem. Assuming that we are serving K users from the base station, having the, the power transmit power constraint of PT, uh, now we sequentially develop the, the RF precoder, baseband precoder, and the power allocation matrix. But in order to maximize the overall system capacity, we need to optimally allocate the powers. Uh, however, this is a non-convex optimization problem. Therefore, in the previous work, we considered the, uh, applying the particle swarm optimization-based power allocation techniques, and we showed that it almost uh, achieved the optimal uh, power allocation, uh, but it has high computational uh, complexity because it randomly distributes the, the search agents uh, in the optimization space as shown here. Then uh, the particles or the agents, they um, uh, move through the iterations to find the, the optimal solution. And in, in this work, we develop a deep learning based power allocation algorithm. Uh, the, the main motivation is to achieve the almost optimal capacity with significantly reduced runtime. Uh, and then it will have the faster prediction with considerable uh, acceptable performance. As discussed earlier, in the system model, we consider multi-user massive MIMO system uh, to serve K single antenna users. At the base station, we have a uniform rectangular array to fit the antenna elements into 2D grid. And then the base station has the hybrid architecture. Therefore, the transmitted signal vector uh, is represented as S. It is the multiplication of the RF precoder, baseband precoder, power allocation block, and the, the data vector. And here, the the baseband and the RF stage, they are connected with uh, NRF uh, RF chains, and the NRF is significantly smaller than the number of antennas and larger uh, or equal to the, uh, the number of users. And the received signal at the Kate user is given in here. It, is the, it, it consists of the desired signal plus the inter-user interference. That's why the, we can write the, the, the signal to interference plus noise ratio expression in equation two then the, according to the SANR, we can find the sum rate capacity. And in order to maximize the, the, the system capacity, uh, the, the optimization problem is defined in equation four, uh, where we try to uh, design the RF precoder, baseband precoder, and the, the power allocation matrix jointly to maximize the overall system capacity. However, um, the, this is a non-convex optimization problem. That's why in the following uh, sections, we will sequentially solve the RF precoder, baseband precoder, and the power allocation matrix. For the channel model, we consider the 3D geometry-based channel model as shown in here. 
according to the URA structure, the channel vector is defined as a function of the, the path gain vector and the phase response matrix. The phase response matrix is consists of the slow time varying angular parameters. Uh, that's why the channel can be composed of two parts as the fast time uh, varying CSI and the slow time varying phase response matrix based on the AOD information. And uh, in the hybrid architecture, we first uh, developed the, the RF precoder. Um, uh, the RF precoder is designed based on the uh, uh, is designed for each user group, assuming that we have G user group, therefore we have G subblocks in the RF precoder matrix. And then the effective channel seen from the baseband stage is defined in equation eight. Here, the diagonal matrices re represents the, the effective channel matrix for a given user group, and the off diagonals are the effective interference channel matrix. That's why here, um, um, in order to maximize the beamforming gain in the desired direction, we would like to choose the RF beamformer matrix for a given user group in the in the subspace spanned by the, the corresponding phase response matrix. And in order to mitigate the intergroup interference, we would like to choose it in the null space of the, uh, the other phase response matrices as shown in here. And uh, that's why we first define the AOD support for each user group and define the, the steering vector uh, for the uniform rectangular array. Then we define the orthogonal uh, quantized angle pairs to cover the complete uh, 3D angular space. Uh, then we choose the, uh, the corresponding angular pairs inside the AOD support of a given user group. That's why finally the RF precoder is, uh, co uh, is um, developed by using the steering vector and then the, the quantized angle pairs inside that angular support. Then in the baseband precoder, we apply the uh, the regularized zero forcing uh, technique. And then uh, here we, we use the effective channel state information scheme from the baseband stage. That's why it reduced the, the channel estimation overhead size uh, from K times M to K times NR. And here is the, the baseband precoder, the closed form expression for the baseband precoder uh, based on the well-known RZF technique. Now we present the deep learning based power allocation algorithm. Uh, for a given RF precoder F and the baseband precoder B, the, the capacity maximization problem is reformulated as in equation 16, uh, where we try to optimize the, the power allocation matrix. However, this uh, problem is still non convex. That's why our motivation is to apply a deep learning mechanism to optimize uh, the allocated powers. And we know that PSO can achieve almost optimal performance, but it has high computational complexity. That's why the new deep learning based power allocation algorithm can address the interesting trade off. It can have the high sum rate capacity, as in PSO, but significantly reduce the runtime. Here we have employ a deep neural network architecture having three hidden layers. And uh, first, in the input layer, we have we use the effective channel and the baseband precoder as the input features. And in the hidden layers, we use the uh, ReLU activation function and the size of each layer are given in here. And at the output layer, uh, we have the, uh, the sigmoid activation function and we try to predict the K power values for every user. And uh, for this purpose, we use either mean square error or mean absolute error loss functions. And uh, finally, we have the predicted power allocation matrix based on the deep neural network architecture. The proposed deep learning uh, algorithm has actually two phases. In the first phase, this is called as the offline supervised learning. Uh, we use PSOPA algorithm uh, uh, to train our neural network, and then we apply the loss function to make the, the uh, to minimize the distance between the prediction and the, the optimal allocated powers. And in the second phase, this is the offline this is the online uh, prediction part. Uh, we run the, the trained neural network architecture and predict the allocated powers in the real-time applications. In this section, we present the illustrative results based on the 3D microcell scenario specified in the uh, 3GPP. And first, uh, we developed the data set uh, for the learning algorithm in MATLAB, and then the, data, uh, the developed data sets are used uh, to train the neural network in the TensorFlow. And after training the neural network, we use the trained uh, neural network. We run the trained neural network also in MATLAB to calculate the, 
uh, the performance, to get the performance. And this table provides the simulation setup uh, for a single cell environment. Just to highlight some important parameters, we have 256 antennas at the base station. We have 20 dBm transmit power, uh, and we consider there, are either, there is either one or two user groups, and the users are equally clustered in each group. Uh, for the uh, for the deep learning architecture, we have the data set size of 100,000 uh, samples, and we split 80%, 20% the training and the validation data. Okay, uh, here we first compare the, the proposed uh, deep learning based power allocation with uh, PSO and uh, equal power allocation. And we show that here uh, we have only one user group and uh, there are three users in that group. And uh, we have the training, validation, and test data sets. And it is seen that in every data set, we can uh, see that the, the proposed DLPA closely approach to the PSOPA. Uh, and it can, it learns the, the optimal allocated powers and it can enhance the, the capacity compares to equal uh, power allocation. And when we increase the number of users to six, we can see that the, uh, we can get the, again the close uh, uh, performance compared to the PSO, but now the performance gap is slightly increased because now we need to predict six uh, transmit power values. Uh, and then as long as we increase the number of uh, predictions, then the, there's, uh, we observe a gap between the PSOPA and then uh, DLPA, but still it is uh, closely approached to the, uh, the PSO. And now, uh, this time we uh, plot the, the sum rate performance with respect to the data set size. And here uh, we have the, the three user case and the six user case. And the data set size varies between 500 uh, and 100,000. And we saw that the performance gap between the PSOP and the, the LPA vanishes as long as we have larger data set size. And uh, it is also seen that um, it is necessary to um, have larger data set size for the test data compared to training uh, data. Now we compare both runtime and the sum rate performance uh, of the PSOPA and the DLPA. Uh, as a reminder, the, the runtime is the main motivation in this work. And uh, first, on the left, we have the sum rate performance versus the number of users. And you observe that. Uh, uh, the, the proposed DLPA closely approach to the uh, to the PSO uh, as the number of users we observe a slight performance gap and the, the, the MAE loss function has a better uh, performance and on the right we provide the runtime results for thousand uh, realizations and the PSO is run on MATLAB and the DLPA is run on both MATLAB and the uh, Xilinx VCK 5000 uh, AI development card. And uh, we observe that the PSO runtime of the PSO is exponentially increasing uh, as number of users increases. But uh, for the uh, for the proposed DLPA, uh, we observe that the runtime uh, remains almost constant across all number of users. And the, the on the Xilinx AI development card, we less than a millisecond uh, per realization in the DLPA algorithm. Also, when we look at the, its relative performance, the, the relative sum rate and the runtime performance, we observe that when we have just two users, we can get 99.7% uh, of the sum rate performance, but we only need the, the runtime of the 1% of PSO. And as long as we go to uh, 12 users, uh, we can still get the 96% of the, uh, the performance, but the runtime is reduced more than 99.9%. And it's a uh, great uh, uh, reduction. And in conclusion, a deep learning based power allocation algorithm technique is proposed for hybrid multi user massive MIMO systems. And we use PSOPA uh, to train the DDNN architecture. And uh, uh, the motivation is to get a faster prediction with acceptable sum rate capacity. And the, the numerical results shows that uh, we can get around 99% uh, capacity. Uh, with uh, for two user case with reducing the, the runtime more than uh, uh, 98%. And when we go for 12 users, we can reduce the runtime uh, more than 99.9%. And it makes the implementation of the DLPA is feasible for the real time online application in massive MIMO systems. Here are the references.
And that's end of my presentation. Thanks for listening.